day 55. Spent the night at Diaz Creek, which is around mile marker 742. I could tell it was colder than normal last night when I went to bed. Everything felt cold. I was laying my spare stuff, my jackets and stuff on top of my sleeping bag. And this morning it was, there was ice on the tent. Not just frost, ice because of condensation. So I shook everything off as best I could and packed it away and tonight I'll drag it out and let it dry out. But I was camping at uh, 9,600 feet, so it's not going to be warm when you're this high. I've been hiking for an hour, started around 7, and I've done 2.3 miles in the first hour, mostly uphill. I'm very pleased with that, that's solid. Today's a little different, I got something, it's like a treat. I have uh, my first lake that I'm going to go to. I've seen a few lakes from a distance, but this time I'm going to uh, hang out at a lake around noon. That's my next water source. So I'm excited about that. I won't do 20 miles today. I think I'm shooting for 17 or 18. Whatever it is that takes me to this creek. Uh, and this creek also has something new, a bear box. So I guess we're in, getting into bear territory, or I already am. I saw a fox yesterday afternoon. That was cool, gray. Gray fox. So a couple new things today. Uh, the strategy is to get myself lined up so that I arrive at the base of Forrester Gap uh, and camp there eventually in a couple days. So that's the goal so that I can attempt Forrester Pass first thing uh, in the morning. Day 55 Good to be alive. Beautiful, beautiful day in the woods in Sequoia National Park. I don't know what everybody else is doing today. Eh, doesn't matter. I'm here. Crossed over a ridge line and into a new valley. And I don't know, but my guess is that looks like the tail end of a, a, a dried up lake. I'll be curious to see if that's the lake I'm going to uh, later today. Here we are at a junction of some trails. Cottonwood Pass is ahead of me there. It's one of the ways out to Lone Pine. I just came through Mulkey Pass. And apparently, maybe that meadow I've been looking at down there was uh, Mulkey Meadow. Apparently so. Horseshoe Meadow to the left is a popular uh, place. I had some... Uh, some guys, a father-son uh, hikers, who were going down there to meet the wife, uh, mother, and uh, spend a few days together. So just a trail junction, and not that busy of a trail junction. Good morning. Check this guy out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wolf. No, it's just a happy dog. How you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. I've looked at my map, I can't find a name for this mountain. But it looks like we the trail goes on around in behind it, and Chicken Spring Lakes uh, on the other side of that. 
goes in behind this tree. Lots of snow up there. Clouds are just now starting to form. We'll see how the day goes. To my right is this beautiful meadow, and over on my left are those snow-covered peaks. Looking across this meadow, I just went over the 750 mark, which is a nice milestone. I've been going up all day, all morning actually, uh, to reach this spot, which is Cottonwood Pass. And after I'm done there, I'll be heading down that side of the meadow and then on over to Chicken Spring Lake, which will be my uh, lunch spot. It's important because it's the last portal off the PCT to get down into Lone Pine in the valley. Uh, from here on out, it's uh, there's there's no way down directly until you get all the way up to Kearsarge Pass, unless you want to go up and over Mount Whitney, which I'm not doing. Uh, this is important because in 30 miles I'm going to hit Forester Pass, and I'm going with the intention of getting over it. And if it turns out it's impassable, I'll have to backtrack 30 miles back to here to uh, Cottonwood Pass to uh, to get over and down into Lone Pine where I'm going to resupply. But uh, I'm optimistic and I think I can do it. Uh, what's coming up next is I'm going down to a lake where I'll have some lunch. A Chicken Spring Lake, which is that way but not very far so I'm hoping I'm saying goodbye to Cottonwood Pass beautiful I just hope I don't have to come back again to get down to Lone Pine I guess we could take a peek see what I'm missing what we got Gorgeous. Big patches of snow. On to Chicken Spring Lake. After 10 miles of gradual elevation gain up to Cottonwood Pass I find I now have a day at the beach I have this pretty lake all to myself So here's my first marmot. He was getting ready to run. Then he saw I wasn't, I'd stopped and talked to him, so he just thought he'd hang out. You're a pudgy guy. For a long time now, I've been going through this big old jumble of boulders and it is not made for easy hiking another beautiful meadow this one has a snowbank some big peaks there off in the distance I'm not sure 
where the trail is in relation to them. Here's another place, though, that I'm going to mark so I can build another house here. It's with a heavy heart that I leave the Golden Trout Wilderness Area and the Inyo National Forest. But I'm thrilled to be entering the Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks. Even though I thought I was already in Sequoia National Park. I swear to God, I saw that on a map. I've got all these different maps. I thought I crossed the boundary. Anyways, I guess it's official that I'm in these uh, two parks now. Okay. Thunderstorm. Been building for a while. Now it's rumbling on a regular basis. Hope it doesn't get me. Another build up over there. But uh, if it's over the trail, I sure hope it's not getting any folks back there, too. Apparently, I'm conditioned after. 750 something miles of of being desperate for water I'm passing a water source here and I feel like I should stop and get some but I don't need to because Rock Creek is just around the corner at 760 and 760 is the end of the water report. I have gone over that thing with a fine tooth comb every day along with the gut hooks app and the half miles app trying to glean where's the water at and calculating how many liters I'm gonna need till the next water and from 760 on, there's just no water report because there's plenty of water in the Sierra. I knew this was coming, but it did feel strange to just bypass that creek. I'll get used to it. Got all my food put away. I moved camp. There's a bunch of tent sites here. And I'm in one of them. Normally you don't camp close to a creek because of the extra condensation, but heck, I was quarter a mile last night from any water source and I still got it so besides this is where the campsites are so I'll have this sound all night Well, it's official now. My first bear locker. This is a bear food locker. 
And this is where you put all your food every night or when you're here in camp. That's so the bears can't get to it. It's got two chain locks on it down there. This is my $65 bear canister. If there wasn't a food locker here, I would put the canister far away from my camp and let the bear have at it because they can't get in them. But at least he, the smell of the food wouldn't be drawn to my tent. He would come here, he would come to that bear canister. But I'm just going to put that inside the locker just for a double safekeeping. So, I mean, you know what this means now. I'm in bear country. That's right. That means every large, dark thing in the woods is a bear. It's a bear. It's not a possible bear. It's not a bear wannabe. It's a bear. Brown bears, black bears, grizzly bears, polar bears, they're all here. And they're waiting for me to go get in my little flimsy tent. I'm putting all my food in that thing. All right? Now what's that? 